All right, folks, I've got an awesome show for you today. I'm hunting at 400 Liggett, and I'm out of breath for a very good reason. But what you're gonna have to do is stick around to the end of the show to find out why. It's a great hunting action coming to you from 400 Liggett. I'm Lieutenant Schuford, your host for the Pendleton Sportsman, coming up next. Let's go. Today we have a great show coming from Fort Hunter Liggett in search of something you can only find in California, the great Thule Elk. Upon returning from Iraq in early 2005, I applied for an archery tag to hunt these majestic animals. Fort Hunter Liggett has had an intensive management program for these critters, and now with a population of about 500, they have this archery season in September and then a later gun season in December. They give out three different types of tags, a bull tag, a cow tag, and then an either sex tag. I was drawn for a cow tag, which is actually a tougher hunt during the rut. The tag costs about $300, but this is by far one of the cheapest once in a lifetime hunts you'll ever get. It's right in the middle of the rut. Bulls are bugling and elk are running around all over the place. My hunting methods included spot and stalk, calling and still hunting, where I would try to pick a good setup and wait for the elk to come by. For the opening weekend, I was joined by Chip Stratman and Doyle Price, both retired Marines. Here's what we got going on. We got at least one bull and about three cows about behind me, probably maybe about a mile. Well, not that far, half a mile. We just, we're on a top of a big ridge, just glassing, looking down in this big open meadow. And we saw him coming from left to right. So we headed to our right, got good wind. The, the wind is in our face right now. I've got uh, Doyle Price behind me hitting the, uh, the little cow calls. And Chip Stratman is with me trying to, trying to be my impromptu cameraman. And uh, we're out here, Fort Hunter Liggett, doing our thing. So hopefully we get an elk. I'm gonna try to get set up here. We're gonna keep calling. First day of elk season, 400 Liggett, Thule elk, archery hunting. All I got is a cow tag though, so we're not gonna be bringing in any monster uh, trophy antlers here, but it's my first elk hunt, and so far so good. At least we've seen them, and we know there's tons of them out here. So, lots of elk, lots of action. Just hope we get it on camera. That's the, that's the whole other variable here. Our first morning out there was action-packed. I started to stalk some elk off to my left, and before I knew it, we had bulls and cows all over the place. Seeing bulls like this makes me wish I had a bull tag while I was up there. There were a lot of biggins running around. This particular bull had five or six cows with him. As the morning went on, more and more elk kept showing up. I felt confident that I could shoot at one of these animals if I got to within 50 yards. While we were out there, Doyle was trying to use cow calls behind me to try to entice the whole herd to come our way. Sneaking around in this open country made it extremely difficult to get close. And not only was it open, but it was very noisy. Every time I went up there, it was very dry, so those elk could hear me coming a long ways out. Once again, folks. Forgive the camera angles. I'm 
got elk over here in front of me. I'm trying to low crawl to a single lone tree right in front of me. Ridiculous. Opening day of elk season. Non-stop fun. So we could get a shot. Not by making noise like that. Dang. What's wrong with me? All right, I'm gonna keep moving. I gotta keep low crawling. It was absolutely awesome to hunt during the rut. I'm a big time turkey hunter and I love hearing that spring gobble, but hearing these elk bugle was the next best thing. The bull to my left held his ground for a while, but he knew I was there. As I watched him, I had no idea that his cows were bedded just a few yards ahead of him. If I had known that, I would have tried to stalk a little bit closer. From this tree, I was about shotgun range from that big bull and the cows that were with him. Elk everywhere. This was definitely a great way to start off my elk season. Here's a lone satellite bull that snuck right in behind us. This bull liked Doyle's calling so much, we thought he was gonna give Doyle a little bit of loving. As this bull got closer to us, we could see that his antlers were all busted up from fighting with other bulls. I've got elk pretty much all out in front of me. Maybe about, maybe about 15 different elk. One big group and one small group. And we're just trying to get them to come in close enough. Doyle Price is over to my right. He's trying to hit every call he can think of to keep them coming this way. I can hear, I can hear bulls bugling everywhere. Uh, unfortunately, all I have is the cow tag, but it's okay because it's just as much fun. I gotta keep up, I gotta keep looking up and looking around to see where the elk are. There's a hill over here where, uh, where there's a big group of them. I don't know which way they're headed. This grass is real high. I, I just low crawled from my last position, uh, probably about uh, maybe like 50, 60 yards. I low crawled here and looked up and the bull, this other big bull was maybe uh, well within in shotgun range at least. That's why I'm kind of doing my little uh, camo here. I got grass sticking out of my head and got the face mask on because I'm, I'm bow hunting. So I'm trying to get as close as I can to these elk. I can, man, I can, I can see him. I can see him all up on that hill up there. So just stick around. Got a lot more elk hunting from Fort Hunter Liggett coming up. Fort Hunter Liggett is an army installation located about six hours north of Camp Pendleton in Monterey County. They have great facilities with an awesome campsite right next to the game warden station. Whether you want to bring your RV or a little camper, or whether you're like me and just want to sleep in the good old Marine Corps sleep system, there's plenty of room for all. There's also a BOQ that costs about 30 bucks a night, and another restaurant and hotel combo that costs about 30 or 40 bucks a night. The restaurant's only open on Saturdays, but it's well worth it to have a good meal after a hard hunt. Now if you made it all the way up to 400 Liggett and forgot some supplies, don't worry, there's a PX right here on the base. There's also a 24-hour gas station where you can fill up. And even a car wash where you can wash down your truck after a long weekend of hunting. Now that you know a little bit about the base, let's get back into the hunt as I have a few bulls headed my way. Okay, quick time check. 725, legal hunting light started at 608 and they're still over there on the hill so just gotta sit here and wait keep doing the calling that one sounded kind of loud hope the camera picked that one up but they look like they're all congregating on my side of the hill the side of the hill that's closest to me and hopefully the plan is that they'll just keep moving this way moving this way and walk in front of me within 50 yards and uh, should be able to fling an arrow at him. Hang in there with me. We'll make it happen. The Pendleton sportsman always makes it happen. Okay, as I'm playing around and looking one way, here comes an elk sneaking up right behind us. Young bull. 
Check this guy out. Right behind me, there's a whole herd of them to the left of me. And I just happened to look to my right, and here comes this guy right here. Look at that. Sucker just snuck right up on us. There's another bull right there. There's like four of them. Right here, right in front of us. You gotta be kidding me. When have you ever heard of somebody complaining about too many bulls or too many bucks in front of you? This is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. I got the shakes. The buck fever. There's a guy right there. Out of range. tree to sit by. I should be by that tree right there. Man, there they are, right there. There's some more over there. Well, folks, and there they are. Still out there a ways. Looks like they changed direction. The big bull herded him up and moved him another way. I don't know if they're going to come back this way. Some of those smaller bulls that were right in front of us. It's going to sit tight. Hopefully they work this way. Unfortunately, that herd kept heading the other way. So we packed it up and headed out in search of some other elk. Little did I know how many unsuccessful close calls were still ahead of me. When you're elk hunting, lots of time is spent just trying to spot a herd. While Doyle and Chip check out the map and try to come up with a game plan for us, let me show you something I did to help prepare me for this hunt. We're, we're out here at the archery range here on Camp Pendleton, and I spent a lot of time out here prepping for this trip. You know, it's a six hour ride up to Fort Hunter Liggett, and you don't want to get up there and blow your one shot at a nice big elk. Well, I'm using a compound bow, and that's what I use to do my elk hunt. And uh, the way you aim with a compound bow is with pins, different types of sights. Like I said, I don't like to spend a lot of money, so this is uh, pretty much a 20, between a 20 and $30 sight. That's all the money I want to spend on stuff. Now, a lot of you at home are looking at me kind of funny and looking at my, my uh, ghetto setup here and, and just shaking your head, I'm sure, but that's okay because I'll kill just as many things as you will for less money. Uh, so I got a nice cheap sight here, and I've set my pins on a 25, a 35, and then a 55 yard pin. The reason why I set it for 55 yards is because out here on the west coast and during this elk hunt, you got a lot of long open shots. But what you want to do when you first start shooting is, is start up close, try your 20 yard pins out, and see if you're on. You want to see if you're centered, left, right, up and down. So that's what we're going to try right here. Let's see if I can hit the mark. Put a little piece of paper out there. It's my target. There it is, dead paper. You want to take a couple shots, see if all the shots are hitting in the same place. Get a good group in there. There it is, two dead papers right in there. So uh, I know I'm shooting good. I know that first pin is on. So once I get that first pin set, I'm gonna go ahead and move to the next pin, whatever I set it on. For those of you who wanna get more sophisticated sights, there's sights with three pins, four pins, six pins, and you could set it from, from 10 to 70 yards all out with different pins. 